the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> here we are again, another grilling session. I'm going to start having him, I think, one of these once a week because he's going to put himself in news. Once again, it's a grilling session for old Linky Boy <laughs> and USC who keeps slip sliding away, slip sliding away, slip sliding away, way down the recruiting rankings. Now they're going to slip down to 17th. And now we got yet another former player of Lincoln Riley's calling him out. <laughs> Let's get to grilling. Here we go again. Here we go again on our own, like the old White Snake song. This is the Outlaw of College Football. That's the OCF. That's me, JDC. <laughs> and today, class, we're going to have a little field trip. We're going to go on a, on a grilling session with the one they call Tebow, a.k.a. Linky Boy, and a.k.a. Crowley Lincoln. There's a new one that I saw the other day from a couple of my Oklahoma buddies, uh, Bart Weisenhood, I think, was the one that popped out out there for me. I think uh, a few more have been saying calling him Crowley. But anyway, getting right to it, let's get that grill out. <laughs> he makes it easy, man. You know, I really and truly have tried to put some variety in this show and get away from that kind of shit. But he just keeps putting himself out there. And now, once again, one of his former players has pushed him out there into the forefront. One Marvin Mims, great wide receiver for Oklahoma, who said in an interview that he had almost decided to transfer from Oklahoma because of some of the things he was promised and the fact that he wasn't targeted very often and the quarterback situation was toxic and nobody really had any kind of connection from some of the notes that I took from his interview right here. Put old Marvin Mims on the list here. The good list, that is. Mims said he wanted to be a part of a team that's more balanced on both sides. Well, gee, where have we heard that before? Now, we've heard a lot of people saying this ad nauseum, and not just Sooner people, not just Marvin Mims. And he said he, he, he wanted to leave because he felt like he wasn't targeted enough. Now, we could play it off as you know, another wide receiver being a diva. But the thing is, this guy's talents and what he had done early on, you would have thought that their offensive coordinator in Lincoln Riley would have worked it as such as to him to get more targets than what he was getting. From the way he was saying it and the way he was talking, it made it sound like maybe Caleb Williams had some favorites on the team, as far as that goes, like Mario Williams, maybe. And you can't do that. <clears throat> you can't play favorites. It's called a team for a reason. Not a clique, a team. And from what I've been gathering here, the consensus is that Caleb Williams had some favorites, as well as Spencer Rattler, maybe, even but more so Caleb Williams. And so he was thinking about transferring, and then Jeff Levy came along. Jeff Levy is an Oklahoma alumnus too, by the way. But Jeff brought in Dylan Gabriel, who had already worked with at Central Florida. So the, the familiarity with Levy has made it real easy for these wide receivers and these other offensive players to get on the same page. He said that Dylan Gabriel is a guy that connects with everybody and tries to connect with everybody. And they even hang out outside of football. And he knows when to put football aside and when to just go out and be one of the boys and make those bonds and those connections that you need instead of worrying about your NFL stock status 
like certain other players, worrying more about doing what's right for the team you're on right now, playing for the University of Oklahoma right now. Because down the road, the NFL scouts are going to see that, and they're going to think that you're not a team player. You can be one of the best quarterbacks, running backs ever. But if you're not a team player, then you're probably not going to get over. You're probably not going to win championships. You know, sort of like back in the day with the Dallas Cowboys and Emmitt Smith and Troy Aikman and Jimmy Johnson and all them guys. Well, not Jimmy Johnson because him and Owen couldn't get along. But they had a connection. They were. And why I keep harping on that connection thing is because you need that. Now, Lincoln Riley, <laughs> you started off pretty hot on that recruiting trail, did you not? But it, it, like I said earlier in the year, there's a little misleading. We need to take a breath or two before we went ahead and assumed that Lincoln Riley was going to be this suddenly uh, great recruiting guru across the board on offense and defense. And sure enough, after he got a few of his own players that he took from Oklahoma, Things have started slowing down a bit. He even slipped a spot this past week from 16th to 17th in the recruiting rankings, from what I've been told. And Oklahoma is now on the cusp of the top 10, just a few micro points away from catching the Arkansas Raisin, Razorbacks and even ninth place Georgia Bulldogs, who are defending national champions. <laughs> it comes a long way from the narrative that was played back in January by a lot of these uh, – Lincoln Riley butt kissers out there. <laughs> so let me tell you something, Lincoln. And I'm going to be straightforward with you, man. You know, I've been messing with you this whole offseason, grilling the hell out of you. But this is what needs to be done if you want this stuff to stop. If you want all this negativity surrounding you to go away. Number one, stop doing all those stupid ass interviews. You don't see, like I said, you don't see Brent Venables and Nick Saban and and Ryan Day out there doing those kind of interviews. That's the first thing. you got to stop running your mouth, man. Just go ahead and stop it right now, and, all, and some of this negativity will go away. And another thing is you got to start being on the up and up, man. You can't come across as shady, because sooner or later people are going to catch on to that shit. You see, the big thing, the problem I have with you, a lot of people think I just, I'm mad at you because you left Oklahoma and went to USC. That's not why I'm pissed off. I'm an Alabama fan, so normally what happens between two other teams don't really aggravate me until it's something that's underhanded as hell and affects the common Joes and Sallies in the know of these teams because most of us are common Joes. You see, the problem I have with you, Lincoln, is that you did it in a shady manner. You didn't leave on the up and up. You didn't give these guys the proper notification, and you didn't, you were not above the board with how you were handling things. The main thing that pissed me off was the fact that you and your staffers were actively recruiting for Southern Cal while you were still employed by Oklahoma. That in itself should piss off just about anybody that has a moral compass. Now, if you just owned that shit, might not have been as bad. We would have still grilled you a little bit, but it wouldn't be going into July now. Plus, like I said, you keep the shit stirred up by making these idiotic interviews and making these backhanded references to Oklahoma and, and deflecting from it and trying to defend what you did. Own that shit, man. Just say, hey, you know what? And he did sort of own it a little bit and said he wished he, if things hadn't turned out the way they did Oklahoma, but that's not apologizing. You need to apologize, man. You just say, hey, look, I handled that wrong. I sh probably shouldn't have been doing those kind of things while I was still employed by the University of Oklahoma. I shouldn't have been trying to recruit for USC. But he's not going to do that. He's not going to do it because he don't, he don't want nobody to think he's shady. We all have shady moments in our life, Lincoln. Everybody does. If you say you don't, then you're lying. Everybody has those moments in life where they do something that they probably regret and they probably know is wrong or shady. And that's what's going to have to happen, man. You're going to have to stop those stupid-ass interviews and just own it, man. And just start coaching your team and worried about USC and worrying about the fact 
that you're slip sliding away in the recruitings. At this point, you're 17th, halfway through the recruiting season for 2023 and 2022. 2023, we still got a little bit of time to rectify your situation. But you need to start becoming more genuine. And if you don't, start making yourself more varied in your coaching and the way you do things and the way you handle things and the way you recruit, then you may have a first good year or two at, at USC, but eventually – that shit's going to catch up to you, man. And you're going to be right back in the position you were in, and you're going to be unhappy, except this time you're not going to be leading to take a, what you would say, a better job. It's easier to recruit to. <laughs> Boy, that shit's been shot to hell. You're going to be leaving because you've been fired. And USC <laughs> will fire your ass. Ask Lane Kiffin. They'll fire you on the tarp. They'll fire you anywhere. They'll fire you while you're in church. They'll fire you anywhere, man. And that's what's going to happen. You're going to be leaving, but it ain't going to be for a better job. It's going to be because you're fired, and suddenly you're going to have to get a job in the Japanese American Football League being an offensive coordinator or the punting coordinator for the Nagasaki Egg Rolls. And that's all I got to say about that. Ah, oh, man, that felt good. Another grilling session for old T-Bow. And with that, I'm going to get off of here. If you don't mind, look up underneath there. Next to the like and share options and the download option is a uh, heart option that says thanks. Click on that. Drop a few dollars in the coffers. Get off the YouTube teat. KMCA to all the other teams. And class is now dismissed.